Hey, Bastish Beer for 64K, and welcome to another episode of Loot and Booty. And welcome back. So on today's episode we're going to hit up a few different places. I'm going to go to a garage sale and hit up a game store. Um, first heading to the garage sale. This looked pretty cool. I saw it online. The guy's got tons of games and movies and all kinds of stuff like that. But in the meantime, it's going to take about another 10-15 minutes to get there. You can check out all my latest thrifting adventures and pickups. <laughs> And like I've said many times in the show, if you go thrifting, you're going to come across this album a lot, multiple times. Good old Herb Albert. Anyway, Boxcar Willie, he looks like he's having a whale of a time. <laughs> George Baker selection, holy 70s. Check these dudes out. What are they wearing? Wow. What a bunch of muties. Only a band a mother could love, I guess. And some more games over here. I found Quantum Break. Fantastic game. Don't let the horrible reviews put you off. Check it out. And I also found Commandos 2 on the PS2. Cool strategy game. I didn't have this version. And the magazines. I found a cool issue of Electronic Gaming Monthly. One of my favorites. This one was from October 1998. And some VHS Madness. And I found a triple threat of Jean-Claude Van Damme movies. Of course I'm going to pick those up. And checking out some cassettes. I found the good old Fine Young Cannibals, the Raw and the Cooked. It's got some pretty cool songs on ya. Drives Me Crazy and Good Thing and a bunch of others. And I found this one I've never seen before. This is called World War II Combat Iwo Jima on the Xbox original. And I also found R Racing Revolution. I have this on the PS2, but I prefer playing stuff on the Xbox original, to be quite honest. And a bunch of NES games I have. Smash Brothers, not interested. <laughs> and National Lampoon's The Magazine, I never knew that existed. And you got an Xbox One year, kind of surprising. It's game for 70 bucks. If that works, it's a pretty, pretty good deal. And I found this awesome Sonic the Hedgehog graphic novel, the Genesis Complete Saga. Artwork is fantastic. And Johnny Paycheck, New York Town. Yeah, right, as if you're in New York, Johnny. Give me a break. And a whole bunch of horrible records. Uh, Conway Twitty, Volume 1, as if he has a Volume 2. He's pretending to sign something for somebody, I guess. <laughs> And over here we got Shades of Green, Great Irish Ballads, uh, I don't think so Martin. And somebody picked up a whole bunch of games and just dropped them off here, I guess they didn't want to buy them after all. Devil May Cry 2, Devil May Cry Original, Devil May Cry 3, if I didn't have all these I would pick these up, this would have been a cool haul. And Skyrim on Xbox One. And even got like John Wick, the movie, and Soul Calibur 2 over there. Holy cow. And I always pick these up. CD minus R's. These things are super expensive now if you try to buy them online. Check that. Four bucks for 50. Hells yes. Check out some more games. Come on and conquer three. Kane's Wrath. I don't actually have this one. Like I've said before in this series, it's the only strategy games I really like. Tom Jones, say you'll be there tomorrow. Uh, sorry, Tom. Not going to do it. Liberace anybody? I've never actually heard a Liberace song to be perfectly honest. The very thought of you. No thank you. And see what- oh my goodness Streisand. No. Tainted the thrift. Console haul yeah. Got a Wii, a racing stick, a Genesis 2. And we got PS3. Another freaking PS3. And we've got a Wii there, and we've got another PS3, and a double 360. Wow. Checking out some more games here. I found some SpongeBob SquarePants game on the GameCube. Very rare to find that. And I get that, me and my daughter can play it. Also found this Prince of Persia game I've never seen before, Forgotten Sands. Must be an exclusive. 
and I'm not paying that price, are you crazy? And I found a Atari Flashback 2, pretty cool. Okay, so let's start checking out some of the pickups. First up is this dodgy Xbox original game called American Chopper 2, based on the TV show. This was super cheap. I'm really intrigued by how this actually plays. Uh, I'm sure it's not going to be a good game at all. It might be, it might be okay, but it's got racing, it's got Paul Senior there having a freak out. Uh, you can bike customization, all that. I don't know, it's, you know, it was super cheap. Like I said, it's complete. It's in pretty good condition. I'm going to replace the box probably. It's a little bit beat up, but otherwise, I'm gonna check this one out. And next is a cassette pickup. I got The Raw and the Cooked by the Fine Young Cannibals. This came out in roughly late 80s, early 90s, I'd say 89, roughly around that period. And it has a lot of cool songs on it. This is the cassette version, obviously. It has like, She Drives Me Crazy and Good Thing and a whole bunch of others. Um, yeah. I'm still collecting cassettes. I'm not really sure why. I haven't got a cassette player yet, but I want to get one. I just like the sound of cassettes. It's like uh, it's like vinyl. It has a certain sound to it that just can't be replicated. Anyway, like this was like you know, 50 cents or something. <laughs> Next, we got a Wii game. It's called Prince of Persia: The Forgotten Sands. It doesn't sound familiar to me. Um, I played like a bunch of them on Xbox original and PS2, that whole trilogy, this whole trilogy and uh, I don't think there was one called Forgotten Sands. I think this might be a Wii exclusive kind of Prince of Persia game. I haven't looked into it yet and uh, yeah, so I picked it up. It's complete, it's in good condition. The biggest reason why I actually did pick it up though, it says, if you see over here, it says bonus game the full Prince of Persia 1992 included so that's got the original Prince of Persia on yeah and it says 1992 which is strange because the game came out in 1990 by Broderbund so I'm assuming they are talking about the CD-ROM version that came out a couple years afterwards which is like enhanced so yeah that's another interesting thing about this uh, i really want to check this out uh, should be pretty cool and i got the vhs of space jam and the big old clamshell i love it i just love that cover it's super awesome really enjoyed this movie back in the day it's in pretty good condition uh, clamshell's a little bit beat up on top but otherwise it's really great uh, michael jordan can't act to save his laugh <laughs> but the Looney Tunes characters and of course Bill Murray uh, really save this movie and make it absolutely hilarious and uh, yeah so add it to the VHS collection and some more games and we got Kesson on the PS2 this was a launch game on the PS2 I remember that specifically because I was actually gonna pick it up and I end up getting something else I don't remember what but anyway Kesson this is by Koei it's one of these big old strategy war games um, I've never actually played this I still have never played this game before it got decent reviews when it came out back then I mean I think this game's gonna look pretty dated even on a PS2 because it's a launch title but still, hasn't got the manual, but it's in really good condition regardless. And another game I never actually played, this is Spawn Armageddon. This is not the Dreamcast one, you know, that kind of uh, arena-based combat one. This is a completely different one. This one I haven't played before. It looks like a third-person kind of action game. And I uh, can't really tell too much about it because I've never played it. But uh, it looks pretty interesting. Uh, I love Spawn's cool character. Uh, it's got music by Marilyn Manson apparently <laughs> and uh, it's made by Namco um, this could be like a really trashy game but spawn games are usually notoriously terrible I haven't come across one that I've actually really really liked so <laughs> we'll see uh, it was super cheap anyway and I got another VHS here this is the little shop of horrors the original version the uh, Roger Corman version from the 50s or early 60s doesn't actually say on here I don't remember exactly it's in black and white so you can just you know I'm pretty sure it was the 60s as you can see it's got uh, Jack Nicholson is in this movie this is one of his first movies so that's uh, that's pretty cool uh, I love this movie um, I've watched this one it's super bad uh, it's not very good but the uh, the whole idea behind it is great and uh, it's fun anyway you know it's typical B-movie garbage but uh, the 
the one from the 80s, I think like mid 80s, the one with Rick Moranis, that is absolutely awesome. You should check that one out if you haven't. Anyway, this is the original. And got another PS2 game here. This is Commandos 2. This is one of these um, kind of strategy action games where you control a group of dudes and you go on missions and like in World War II. This is based on a PC game and this PS2 version is uh, it's pretty decent. I've played it before. It's not as good as the PC one, but it's, uh, you know, another game that I picked up for virtually nothing. It was a video shop rental, as you can see there. Uh, it's still in good condition. It's got to take that tag off there, and then it's good to go. Next is another game. This is a 360 game called Sacred 2. This is kind of like a Diablo kind of RPG adventure game. You know, you can choose up a whole bunch of characters, go on quests. It's got that kind of top, almost three quarters, asymmetric kind of view and uh, it's a big old RPG, big old dungeon basher kind of thing. This game's in excellent condition. Um, I think this game was a free game on uh, Xbox Gold, you know, a few months ago. But anyway, I've got the, uh, got the original version now, which I always like. I like to have the physical version, so that should be pretty fun. Now the VHS here, this is Laser Mission with Brandon Lee. Uh, this cover is kind of weird um, because this is I think this is a re-release. It's the yeah, 1996. Yeah, it's a re-release. This movie came out in probably late 80s, early 90s. The original version of this, and this was obviously released after um, Brandon Lee was uh, became famous. You know, with like Rapid Fire and uh, The Crow. So obviously a cash cow kind of thing. But anyway, the cover is still pretty decent. Uh, it's got him kicking on the back. <laughs> But uh, the original cover is way better than this. And anyway, so I've got that. Good condition. Why not? I've got most of his movies anyway. Next is a Kingdom Hearts game. This is Kingdom Hearts RE Chain of Memories. I have no idea which Kingdom Hearts game this is in the series. Uh, I've played the first two after that. Uh, I got completely lost because the series. Um, the wording of the titles and everything is so confusing. It's probably the most confusing uh, series I've ever tried to follow. Anyway, if you've never played these, they are action RPGs set in the Final Fantasy and Disney World. It's like a crossover. I know it sounds weird and you're probably thinking that sounds terrible. How can they possibly be good? Um, these are surprisingly really well made. Uh, the stories and everything, uh, the characters, Everything about these games is quality. Uh, the ones that I've played anyway, I can't speak for all of them. But uh, yeah, finding this at the thrift store is super awesome. This was only a few dollars again. And next we got the Jean-Claude Van Damme classic Bloodsport. You gotta love this movie. Watched this in the 80s many, many times, way too many times. I think everybody watched this movie. Uh, super cool to have this. I wish it was like the original version. You know, this is like a re-release, but whatever. This is just one of quite a few Jean-Claude movies that I just happened to find all at once, so we'll see some more soon. Next is a PS2 game called Racing Italiano. It's still sealed, um, and that does not mean it's uh, gonna be of any value. <laughs> oh, it's called Alpha Romeo, Racing Italiano. So that's the full title anyway. Um, Never heard of this game, never seen it before, never come across it. Um, it prides itself on being the truly authentic Italian racing experience. The first racing RPG, complete lies uh, based on this. Uh, this is not the first racing RPG. I mean, I can just think of one game offhand that's a racing RPG just at the top of my head without even doing any research. It's called Racing Lagoon by Squaresoft, came out in the late 90s so Lars um, if you're gonna write something on the back of these things at least do some research come on but anyway I've no idea about this game it's probably not gonna be that great but I've never come across it so why not and next is another VHS this is 2001 a Space Odyssey this is one of the uh, Stanley Kubrick movies that I actually do like I'm not saying he's a terrible director or anything um, his movies are very uh, you know a quiet taste I guess <laughs> but uh, I actually really like this I think this is really good especially for when it was made and how well it actually stands up now if you watch it now so anyway 2001 Space Odyssey my, f my favorite movie of his is obviously Full Metal Jacket but this is still pretty cool uh, if you've never seen this movie it's well worth watching just be prepared you know it's uh, 
bit of a mind trip. And we got a PC game pickup here. This is the good old Max Payne, the CD-ROM version. I'm actually surprised I don't have this game because I picked up so many uh, PC CD-ROM games when I first started thrifting that I got them all. So this one I just haven't got. I haven't even got the big box version, which I really want to get. Uh, anyway, good old Max Payne. And uh, man, I played this game on my PC for the first time and I was blown away at how cool it was. I believe it came out after the Matrix, so it had that kind of bullet hell style, you know, that kind of bullet time thing going on. So it came out a couple years after the original Matrix movie. This game just blew me away. One of the coolest action games. I played a lot of other versions of it. The Xbox original one's pretty good. The PS2 one is really hacked down, so don't, don't play that one. But anyway, uh, the PC one is still the best. And a double dose of movies here. These are two Star Trek VHSs. Just look at how cool these are. These boxes are just excellent. I mean, such quality. This was part of a, a full set that was there. And they had probably like 12 or maybe even 15 of these things. I don't know how many, but they had a lot. And uh, I wasn't gonna buy all of them because I don't have space to put all these. So I chose my favorite ones out of here. So I'll show you, I'll show you what it looks like. Good quality here. These boxes are just beautiful. But anyway, I chose my favorites. They'd have some of my favorite uh, classic Star Trek episodes. So this one has Our Mud and Trouble with Tribbles. Uh, great episodes. And this one has Where No Man Has Gone Before and Mud's Woman, another one with Harry Mud, who was like a recurring character for a few episodes. And yeah, so really cool to have these. I'm a massive Star Trek fan, way more than Star Wars, so this is always a treat for me. And a 360 game that I'm surprised I don't actually have, it's uh, Mirror's Edge. If you ever played this, it's like a first person kind of uh, action game, it's like parkour action kind of game. It's surprisingly, it plays surprisingly well, it's really well made. It's a short game, which I really like. I don't like games that are long anymore. I just don't have patience for that kind of thing. I don't have time for that sort of thing. The patience is still there. The time, I think, is <laughs> more important. Surprisingly, it wasn't part of my collection. I used to have it, and I must have sold it or traded it for some reason after I finished it. But anyway, good to have it back. And finally, here is another Xbox original game called Whiplash. I've hardly ever come across this game before, so this is another one I just immediately picked up. It's kind of like a third person action game. Looks like you're like uh, some sort of animals trying to escape a lab, maybe getting tortured for some whatever reason, you know, that kind of thing. <laughs> it's made by Crystal Dynamics. That's actually the reason why I picked it up. Otherwise, I probably would have just uh, skipped over it because, you know, they make really good games. I like their stuff. Uh, even their like cutesy kind of platformy kind of stuff. Uh, although this is not platform, although it doesn't seem like it, but. Uh, even their cutesy stuff is pretty good, so I'm always willing to give it a shot. Uh, it looks, looks like it has a lot of personality, and I never hear anybody talk about it, so yeah, whiplash. And that's it for the first bunch of pickups. Back to the show. Okay, I just passed the place there, so I'm gonna stop over here, and then we're gonna head on in and check it out. Okay, and here it is. This literally is a garage sale. It's in the dude's garage. This place was just jacked up with stuff. Tons and tons of games, old memorabilia, uh, more retro games down there, Box Genesis. How cool is that? Found a whole bunch of Intellivision games here. Yeah, I love seeing these old, old, old games still boxed. I think it's fantastic. Here's Sega's Carnival arcade game. And some PS2 stuff. I found one I've never come across before, Naval Ops by Koei. Definitely gonna pick that up for five bucks. And tons and tons of loose figures. So many, so many. <laughs> it was really hard to film in here because it was really tight space and there were a lot of people here. Uh, I was trying to avoid getting them on camera. So yeah, it was hard to shoot. And a whole bunch of VHS here. Project AKO on VHS, it's a really great movie. Tons of other anime here, which is fantastic. And he's got a whole lot of system set up so you can check out games, you test them before you leave, make sure they work, which is a cool idea. 
whole rack of NES games here. Most of them are pretty common ones. Super Scope, ugh, what a piece of trash. <laughs> and some loose Genesis games there. Uh, Michael Jackson on 8-track anybody. <laughs> and some more figures, G.I. Joes coming out of the woodwork here. Castle Grayskull. And anytime I see stuff behind glass, you know they're gonna want some sort of insane price for anything, so that's when I just take a look and I don't bother asking because it's pointless. Anyway, no Star Trek figures there. Sunset Riders, what a great game. A whole bunch of Nintendo stuff, behind glass of course, so you know what the prices are gonna be. Okay, so I just finished at the garage sale across the road there, and I got three pickups. Uh, I could have bought a lot more, but uh, I did contact this guy beforehand, and he said that I asked him specifically if the prices of these games and stuff was going to be eBay prices. Because if it's eBay prices, I'm not going to bother because I can just buy it on eBay, and it's you know it's not the thrill of the hunt is kind of gone. But anyway, he said no, they're not. But honestly, uh, most of his stuff was priced at eBay prices because he was using eBay to check out what the prices were when I was asking him. So, I mean, defeats the whole object. Uh, but, you know, these games were, uh, one of them was really cheap and the other ones were medium. Um, you know, I probably wouldn't have bought them if, uh, if I was anywhere else, but uh, they were in really excellent condition and uh, that actually drove me to buy them. Uh, still got a pretty good deal, but not, not a massive deal though, so not garage sale prices. Anyway, so the first one up was super cheap. This one's called Naval Ops Commander. This is a game made by Koei, another one that I picked up, and this is a big old strategy kind of action game. It's based on World War II, um, you know, big ships fighting in the Pacific, that kind of thing. Koei made a whole bunch of these kinds of games in the um, you know 90s and uh, early 2000s and all that kind of stuff and then they just stopped doing these kind of big war games. Anyway this thing's fully complete. This looks like it's a good mixture of like kind of arcade action and strategy which I really like. Uh, I'm looking forward to trying this one out. And next was a pickup of a Genesis and a Mega Drive game which is super cool. The first one I'll show you here, this is Dynamite Duke. This is based on the arcade game of the same name. I've never actually played the uh, Mega Drive version of this so that's what made me want to pick it up. This is also the Japanese version which I absolutely love collecting. Um, as you can see, it's like it's kind of like a third-person uh, game where you like going sideways. It's a mixture of uh, the game, uh, the arcade game Cable or Cabell, and uh, the arcade game Operation Wolf. It's a mixture of both of those together. And as you can see, in Japan, they just slapped Dolph Lundgren on the cover. You know the. American version and the other versions have a different cover. Obviously they don't want to get um, sued or anything. In Japan at this time you could get away with doing crazy stuff like this and nobody would have noticed. So that's I thought that's pretty hilarious. I do like this cover though. It's way better than the US version. <laughs> and uh, yeah this is, a, this is a pretty cool arcade game but uh, still haven't played the Mega Drive one. And the other game was a game me and my daughter were playing the other day on my uh, Sega Genesis Mini, so this is Toe Jam & Earl, the original version. I'm so happy I got this, this is a cool game, it's really unique, it's fully complete in excellent condition with the manual, which is really nice. It's a kind of, it's a strange game, I don't even know how to describe this, you know, it's like two player, you gotta try and put your rocket back together, you've crashed on a planet, and you're trying to like find pieces of it, and you just go through, everything in this game is random from items to levels, so everything, you never know what you're going to get when you play this game. It's super strange, it's got a lot of personality, it's a fun uh, Genesis game worth checking out. Okay, so I'm on the road again, this time I'm heading home, I'm going to pick up my wife and daughter and we're heading out to Calgary. We're actually going to Ikea, but uh, you know, I'm going because I want to check out the Video Game Trader, it's an awesome retro gaming store. I've been there before, I've shown it in a previous episode, check this one out there for full coverage, but I haven't been there in more than six months, so it should be interesting, I want to see what I can find, and this trip is like two and a half hours or so, but in the meantime you guys can check out the rest of my thrifting adventures for the last couple of weeks. <laughs> Thank you.
So if you're looking into getting Xbox 360 collections, Xbox Original, PS2 and PS3, now is the time. Thrift stores are jacked up with these titles and great ones too, so if you're ever thinking about that, you should do it because these games are going to be super expensive pretty soon. And I found a copy of Mirror's Edge, I used to have this, uh, traded it at some point, but glad to have it back. He has an Xbox Original, 30 bucks, that's not too bad if it works. And there's a freaking uh, graphics card here, a GeForce, I love the fact that it's just lying on the shelf, like all open in that. <laughs> The nylons happy together. Oh my goodness, look at these muties. This has tainted the thrift. Tainted it. Nintendo games that nobody wants. Ooh, Sonic 2 on Game Gear. A little bit of VHS madness. I found this double dose. Good old meatballs with Bill Murray. And Blue Thunder with Roy Scheider. Damn good movies. And we have a tape deck. I still want to get one. This was a really cool condition. 34 bucks. I don't want to pay that much in a thrift store. And, uh, you know, I'm not 100% sure whether it worked anyway. There's a lot of good games to find in thrift stores these days. Uh, unfortunately, I have most of them, so I'm not really finding too much. Alfred Alpaca. Don McDonald. Dude, what are you wearing? Look at that horrible background. Ah, <laughs> it's terrible. And yeah, there's just so many good games. Uh, I've just got most of them, like this Final Fantasy one, I got that. And all these Xbox One re-releases of Dark Souls. These games look like an excellent condition. If I was on the lookout for them, I'd probably pick them up, but not really my thing. Uh, Diablo there. Oh, Manilo, almost as bad as Streisand. Oh, oh my god, hold on, Dan. Dude, look at your hair. Man, you've tainted the thrift. And I've also got that Ninja Turtles game, but I haven't got this one, Sacred 2. This is a cool RPG kind of a, you know, top-down Diablo kind of RPG game, so we'll pick that up. And a whole bunch of GameCube and Wii stuff here. Monster Hunter is pretty tempting, but not at that price. And games, games, games. Most of them I have. Oh, I haven't found this one before. Never even heard of this one before. So, definitely gonna pick that up. Some more vinyl madness here. <laughs> Village people, macho man, of course. Look at these dudes, what are they wearing? Holy moly. Sean Cassidy, holy cow. Gone back to the 70s again. Da do Ron Ron. This is some 16 year old girl's copy, I guess. And some VHS's, yeah. My favorite Bond movies, I could not pass these up. License to Kill, and also Living Daylights. Living Daylights, such a great movie. Holy cow, so glad I found them both at once. And some Gears of War games there. See those everywhere. And American Chopper too, my goodness. Am I gonna buy this? Of course, why not? It's gonna be rubbish, but I just wanna see what it looks like. Max Payne, fantastic. I haven't even got this game. And Hot Shots Golf, PSP game, pretty cool. Somebody unloaded their entire manga collection. Some really good ones in here, like these Cowboy Bebop ones. I've got the whole anime though. And also Battle Angelita, super cool. Okay, so on to the second round of thrift pickups. So first up is a VHS here. This is Blue Thunder. If you've never watched this movie, you really should. It's a helicopter movie with Roy Scheider and it's it's pretty excellent. Malcolm McDowell is the main bad guy in this movie, so it's totally worth watching for that. This is uh, this looks like it's an original uh, original release. It's like a little bit beat up and stuff like that. It's not a, a re-release label, as far as I can tell. Anyway, this is cool. This is a helicopter movie, and helicopter movies were super cool in the 80s. It's like this guy flies this experimental police helicopter kind of thing anyway awesome movie check it out next up is okami i'm also kind of surprised i haven't found this game or own this game yet i played this back in the day and i really liked it it's by capcom it's kind of a strange game you like this wolf and you gotta like paint things in the game to make like powers and stuff like that it's hard to describe it's very very unique it's got some cool music and excellent graphics it's hard to see there, but uh, this game is uh, very cool. Um, 
definitely worth checking out if you never have. I'm really glad to get this one as well. It's fully complete. It is the greatest hits. I'm not a big fan of that. So if I find it again, you know, somewhere else and it doesn't have greatest hits, I'll just trade this one. But for now, I've got it. Next up is a really underrated comedy. This one is called Meatballs. I think it came out in the late 70s. It's got Bill Murray. I'll buy anything with Bill Murray. I've seen this movie. It's really good. It's really funny. It's one of those like camp counselor movies. You know, those ones. Shenanigans happen. The usual. This one's actually directed by Arvin Reitman though. He directed Ghostbusters and Straps. Uh, Harold Ramis is also in this, Egon from the Ghostbusters movies. So that combination of dudes, they made a couple, they made quite a few movies together, three or so. So um, pretty cool. Check this one out if you haven't, it's well worth it. Picked up this graphic novel the other day, also from a thrift store. This is uh, Sonic the Hedgehog, Genesis, the complete saga. I love the way they wrote this, like in the Genesis font for the console. I think that's clever. Anyway, I love Sonic and the quality of this, the artwork is just excellent, just such good quality, it's a cool story, um, yeah, totally picking this up, this is done by Archie Comics, and it was like dirt cheap, and I also happened to find the original Forza Horizon, I love this series, I've only played like two of them, <laughs> but I uh, absolutely loved every second of those, they're probably my favourite uh, kind of like arcade kind of racing games, you know, next to uh, Outrun 2, but that's very linear, but uh, these are more open world, but still very arcade action styled. These games are just flawlessly good. By far the best racing kind of games made in the last 10 years, so if you've never played any Forza Horizon games, check them out. They're all excellent that I've played so far, and I've never played the original though, so this was a cool find. And I found this movie called 5050, I've actually seen this in the 90s. Uh, it's a very obscure movie, it's an action comedy, it's got uh, Peter Weller and Robert Hayes, Robert Hayes is from the Airplane movies and Peter Weller is obviously Robocop, I love him, he's a excellent in everything and he's a super underrated actor. Anyway this movie, uh, I vaguely remember it, that's why I wanted to get it again, I want to watch it. Um, it was pretty fun, it's a good old dumb kind of fun action movie, you know, with a lot of comedy. and. Uh, I actually noticed yeah, I didn't know this, it came out in 1993, so there we are. Um, it's directed by Charles Martin Smith, that's like the little accountant dude from the Untouchables movie, if you know that, if you know which character I'm talking about. I know he directed a few movies, but that's surprising, I didn't know that, that's added that to my movie knowledge anyway. <laughs> 50-50. Uh, Another random pickup here was a uh, Hot Shots, Hot Shots Golf Open Tee. Haven't come across this one. Hot Shots Golf games are really cool. I played a lot of them on PS2. The PSP versions are also really good. So yeah, this is just playing good old fun. Uh, it's fully complete as well. Comes with everything. And it was dirt cheap, so another cool find. And this is always a treat, finding a big box PC game. I just don't find these anymore, which is sad. Very, very sad. I used to find them all the time, probably about 10 years ago, but now they're like almost non existent. So, this is Civilization 3. This isn't as old as some of the other ones I like finding. You know, the stuff from the 90s is the best. Anyway, um, it's still at the big box version and uh, it's got the gatefold kind of thing happening here. If you never played a Civilization game, you know, you like you build Civilization from the ground up and you can like change history and fight battles and choose your. Um, you know, your main character, you can choose like all crazy things like uh, Cleopatra or Julius Caesar or Gandhi and just go mental on everything. <laughs> it's, a, it's a cool series and this is fully complete, um, very nice, excellent condition, very happy to have this one. And this is something I pick up all the time at thrift stores. I would highly advise buying CD-Rs from thrift stores, don't try and buy them online. These have become really expensive, even in shops, uh, they're, very, they're kind of harder to find as well and they are expensive. This I picked up for like $3 or whatever, this is a sealed CDR pack, it's got 50 CDs in here. So I picked these up because I burn games, uh, I burn games I want to try out or games that I'm interested in getting maybe in the future, but I'm not sure if I really want to buy it. And also games I know I'm never going to own. I'm not going to buy any ridiculous game for like $500. I don't care what it is. I'm not going to buy it. I'm not going to buy anything like 
even over a hundred dollars forget about it so I just burn it and play it and have fun because that's what gaming is all about so I got that for $3.99 it goes for way more if you try to buy these in shops and I burn games for my PSX my Japanese PlayStation and my Sega Saturn and I can burn for other ones oh and Dreamcast so you know burn them check them out play them whatever these are always invaluable to helping do that and I always check out the magazine rack I usually never find anything but you never know I found a ton of Nintendo powers uh, a couple episodes ago so go check that out and looting booty and I found tons like just probably like 25 to 30 it was crazy and they were all like a dollar each or whatever so anyway I found out copy of EGM this is from the late 90s oh, man I used to love this magazine it's so excellent this is from 1998 it's got Rogue Squadron on the cover there these are just the best to page through and look at games I mean this is Thunder Force and you got rival schools there just this is like a Parasite Eve oh man it's just Mega Man Legends come on these magazines are like tomes and like just great records of gaming and of well worth looking out for and a double dose of James Bond VHS and I got The Living Daylights and License to Kill these are my two favorite James Bond movies of all time I've mentioned this on my channel before and uh, Timothy Dalton is super underrated um, he's actually my favorite Bond I know he only acted in two movies but who cares these are flawless uh, I would highly recommend watching any of these these movies managed to mix the best of what made the Sean Connery movies awesome you know just that cool fun adventure with that slightly tongue-in-cheek kind of thing not the over-the-top tongue-in-cheek of the Roger Moore days but it's still like you know it had that Sean Connery vibe but it also mixed in with the uh, the more gritty kind of Daniel Craig style it this these came out long before you know that style was really in vogue so these movies you know were shunned a little bit especially the second one last license to kill the first one did really well this one didn't do that well this, this one is super violent <laughs> this is basically a Daniel Craig movie but one that wouldn't make you fall asleep while watching it <laughs> so anyway uh, check these movies out the best Bond movies this was a cool pickup the Tecmo arcade classics I mean super cool look at all these great Tecmo games yeah I mean buying it for Rygo and Bomb Jack is worth it just alone but you got tons of other excellent games in here it's got uh, 11 games which is not a lot for a compilation but they're all pretty good ones and it's got some really obscure Tecmo stuff worth checking out so this is on the original Xbox this only came out on the original Xbox this compilation so if you want to play it look out for this and I found some more magazines I got two Xbox official magazines which is pretty cool I used to collect this also I got all the demo discs still this one has Knights of the Old Republic 2 again these are just great you know examples and uh, just just tons of gaming history in here I know this is not from like not from like 30 years ago or something but it's still it's still like 20 20 or so years ago it's it doesn't seem that long ago I felt like I played these games the other day but uh, apparently not <laughs> and these are still packed with cool information and next we've got a 360 game called Borderlands the pre-sequel this is another game I've never played actually I've only ever played the original I just didn't feel like I needed to play anymore after that because it pretty much satisfied me completely and uh, anyway this is another game I picked up for cheap and uh, I don't know if I'm ever gonna end up playing this to be perfectly honest so I might trade it um, just gonna keep it for now um, it looks pretty cool anyway uh, most of these games are quite cool these borderland games but I don't know whether I'm just actually gonna play this one here's another pickup I've never come across this game not that I'm even aware of it's called World War 2 combat Iwo Jima obviously based on uh, World War 2 uh, the fighting in the Pacific against the Japanese it's a first-person shooter surprise surprise uh, during this uh, Xbox PS2 era World War II games were everywhere probably in the late 90s actually PS1 and stuff and they just oversaturated it until you just didn't want to play anything to do with World War II unfortunately that's how I felt anyway and this game is just another part of that uh, but in retrospect now that I haven't played any of these games in years I picked this one up I'm pretty sure this is not going to be good either this is a uh, it's pretty obscure um, 
It's made by Groove apparently. I've seen their logo before and uh, they might have made that American Chopper game we looked at earlier but I'm not sure. But uh, anyway, uh, it was cheap and this was a cool find. This is a Spongebob Squarepants game and it's on the GameCube. I actually found a GameCube game which is just crazy. You just don't find these anymore at thrift stores at all. Uh, it's in good condition too. Uh, usually if this is a party game, the disc is trashed because it's usually used by a bunch of kids, but the disc is in good condition. Again, this looks like a party game. I haven't played it. I'm going to play it with my daughter, so that's actually the reason I got it. It's got a whole bunch of mini games. You play with all the characters, you know, Patrick and uh, Sandy and all those mutants. But anyway, uh, so <laughs> anyway, SpongeBob. And this is more of those Jean-Claude collection I was talking about earlier. I picked up these other two as well. So I got Tom Cop here and Double Team. Tom Cop, man, this is a cool movie, super underrated. Uh, this movie did really well when it originally came out. It's directed by Peter Hyams, I believe. It doesn't say on the back here, but yeah, anyway, he's a pretty underrated director and uh, great movie. It had, uh, what's that guy, Ron something, Ron Silva, he was a good bad guy, he's unfortunately dead. He was a good bad guy in this movie and this is one of Jean-Claude's best movies as t in terms of a movie like overall being good, you know, just plot production wise, action, just everything all in one. I love this. And on the opposite spectrum of good Jean-Claude Van Damme movies is Double Team. Having said that, uh, the general consensus is this movie's terrible. I really love this movie. It is so super weird. Uh, it's got Dennis Rodman who can't act to save his life, obviously. But uh, Jean-Claude is great in this movie. Uh, this movie is bonkers. It's just completely mental in the head. Um, it's directed by uh, Choi Hock, who's a Hong Kong action movie guy. He directed tons of classic movies. So many. Once Upon a Time in China. And just hundreds that I've watched and I just absolutely love. Directed some, he's a producer on some of the Better Tomorrow movies. Anyway, Choi Hawk, you see there. And uh, this movie also has Mickey Rourke, who looks like he's sleepwalking through the movie. Um, Jean Claude looks like he's sleepwalking through it. Dennis Rodman doesn't know what he's doing in this movie. This movie is mental. I love it. The action is insane. Uh, if you've never seen this, <laughs> you should just check it out. It's like you'll just be scratching your head, uh, but you'll have a big smile on your face. And some racing games here on the Xbox original. I got R Racing Revolution and Ford Mustang. So R Racing Revolution, I've already got this on the PS2. This game's made by Namco. It's extremely good. If you've never played this one, it's a game on that generation as a racing game that's well worth trying out. It's a little bit more simulation-y than uh, kind of arcade-y. But it does a good mixture, um, it's kind of like a, I think as far as I know it's like a spin-off of the Ridge Racer series, I'm not 100% sure on that, but R Racing, I think that's what it's supposed to imply, I've never really even bothered to look into that, I just know it as R Racing. And the second one yeah, is Ford Mustang, this game I haven't played before, it's made by 2K Games, so it's got potential, it looks really nice, I'm pretty sure this is going to be very generic and forgettable. But uh, it was super cheap and uh, excellent condition as well. And a double dose of Xbox 360 games here. These are some pretty cool ones. I've only played one of them. This first one though, I haven't actually played before. This is RL2 Sturmovic Birds of Prey. This is one of these uh, kind of uh, arcade action-y kind of simulation games set in World War II, obviously. And uh, the graphics look really good. Uh, rem I remember seeing a, a demo or at least a video of this when it originally came out and I was really interested but it just too many games came out on this system and it just got lost in the flood. Anyway this game's fully complete, excellent condition and the other one there was Come On and Conquer 3, this is Kane's Wrath. This is uh, you know there were two Come On and Conquer games on the Xbox 360 as far as I remember anyway. <laughs> Uh, this was the second one. This is th the first one was Command and Conquer 3 uh, Tiberium Wars. I played that way more. This is like, uh, this, I think this was like almost like an expansion pack on the PC. But this can be played as a standalone game, like it says over there, which is pretty cool. And uh, Command and Conquer's are the one of the rare um, 
real-time strategy series that I actually do like. I'm not a big fan of real-time strategy games. So anyway, these ones I like. I probably like it mostly because it has tons of FMV and I'm a big FMV sucker. <laughs> and they put Command and Conquer FMV sequences are super cool. And uh, yeah, so anyway, that was cheap as well. And the final pickup from this whole thrifting adventure was Fearless Hahina. This is a Jackie Chan movie. I'm pretty sure this was from late 70s, early 80s. Uh, I watched this as a kid many, many times, way too many times. It's fantastic, it's excellent. Uh, the, I'm hoping this is the original, like, dodgy uh, English dub. I'm pretty sure it is, but this is just done by All Seasons Entertainment. Never heard of them, so I'm assuming they just took the original, uh, you know, trashy 80s version and re-released this. I don't know when this was re-released, uh, it doesn't really say. Uh, it's got nothing on it, so it's one of these, one of these kind of videos. But uh, yeah, I love this movie. Jackie Chan's early stuff is the best. It can't be beat. Anything from the late 70s right up until, I would say, like, just before Rumble in the Bronx. After that, it starts getting kind of cheesy and uh, just not as good. And that's unfortunate because that's when he became super famous worldwide. And before that was, he was famous obviously worldwide, but not as much uh, after Rumble in the Bronx, then it was super famous, and that's when his like kind of mediocre movies came out. I'm not saying there's no good ones, there's still lots of good ones, lots of good action, but just they just weren't that kind of same kind of quality as these older ones. So if you've never seen Fearless Ahina, check it out. And that's all my thrifting pickups for the last few weeks. Back to the show. Okay, so we're just outside the mall here in Calgary. My wife and daughter have already gone in. So let's go inside and check out Video Game Trader. Here's a little look at that Sakura Wars Dreamcast Japanese exclusive package. And tons and tons of Super Nintendo games boxed, all in very good condition. And of course, a plethora of loose carts. Atari 5200 there with some cool games. Original Space Invaders cabinet. Extremely cool. And my daughter was playing a bit of Donkey Kong Jr. there. Bit of an overview of the store and how big it is. And E.T. up there, he seems to be like a mascot for this store for some reason. And I haven't seen this many Saturn games, North American Saturn games all together in so long, it's really impressive. And a little PS1 with the screen, I wish I still had my one like that. Here's a closer look at that Donkey Kong Jr. cab. Good old cocktail version. And another arcade, -er, the original Street Fighter 2. Can't even tell you how many times I played this in the arcades. And some of the older stuff Atari and television, the lone Commodore 64 game there. And some Epix fast load cartridge, pretty cool. Truxton! Some fantastic Genesis games they got you. Bit pricey though for my blood. <laughs> and I found a few PSP games I'd never seen before, like Dungeon Dragons Tactics. Never, never seen that one. I probably should have got that. Damn it. <laughs> and also Field Commander, this also looks cool. I should have got that as well. It's like turn-based strategy game. Damn it. And a Sega Channel cartridge. Never actually seen one of those in reality. And some of these dodgy LCD handheld things. I used to play those all the time. And some cool Game & Watches as well. Some more cool Sega Saturn games. I really wanted that X-Men Children of the Atom. I used to have that. And a couple variations on the limited run re-release of the Podracer game. 
and unfortunately there were no laser discs for five bucks otherwise i would have bought quite a few did have them the sashi miyamoto trilogy of movies here the dual one the second one that's definitely my favorite great old movies and inner space what a fantastic film great old joe dante flick they had the dungeon and dragons arcade game I found this Capcom beat em up. I think I've only seen this game once before. Beat down. Looking through some more of the laser discs. And I came across this gem, Hard Boiled. My goodness, it's my favorite action movie of all time. But I'm not paying 54 bucks, sorry. ET's got in the little film reel and a little gizmo there tons and tons of master system games and a double dose of Stallone and they even had the Konami police 911 arcade game very cool and then i'm done at video game trader and i only picked up three games again these are sega genesis games um, i'm on a sega kick lately and uh, it's been finding all the ones i really wanted so filling out the collection there not really specifically um i don't really specifically go and uh, collect for any systems i just like a bit of everything i usually go for obscure stuff to be honest but I found some really cool ones that I've been looking for anyway. Ones that I played back in the day that I really loved. So I've got three here, so let's first check this out. First one up here is Desert Strike. I'm really surprised I haven't got this yet. I've got the rest of the Strike series, the entire series. Um, not sure when this video is going to come out. It might come out after I've made the Strike series video or might be before the Strike series video. Anyway, look out for that. It's coming soon. I'm pretty sure this is going to come out first. So I'm going to have a video on this entire series. Desert Strike was the final one I was looking for, so I can actually make that video. If you've never played this, it's like an asymmetric action game, mixed with strategy. This one is based on, like it's kind of like set in the Gulf War, that kind of thing. And uh, this thing is fully complete, as you can see, it's in excellent condition. And I got it for a pretty good price. Next one up is Truxton. I'm really surprised I got this. And it was pretty decently priced as well. And uh, if you don't know this game, it's like a shoot 'em up. This is actually a re release. And as you can see, it's got the Japanese cover, which is a thousand times better than the rubbish uh, North American cover. And it's just actually got a slip case. You can see there. I actually swapped this. You can actually flip the cover and. Uh, you know put the American version on but why would you <laughs> and anyway this is a shoot 'em up made by Toplan they made excellent shoot 'em ups in the 80s and 90s and uh, this is a, just another one this thing is a re-release by Retrobit yes Retrobit anyway I can't show you all the stuff in here but it comes with on this like pink cartridge and a whole bunch of stickers and manuals and a whole bunch of cool stuff in here man this is cool they released this, uh, all these Toplan Genesis collection, um, you know, last year, I think. And I'll, I just don't have the money to buy all these things in bulk, you know, all at once. It's just too much money. Anyway, I would love to have got them. But anyway, I'm glad I came across this and I'm, I've got Truxton now. I'm still looking for Flying Shark and whatever else it came with. And this game I got for super dirt cheap. Uh, this is PJ Golf Tour 2 and you're probably thinking, why did I buy a sports game? And um, this game is super good. This is probably the best uh, Sega Genesis golf game by far. Actually, this is one of my favorite golf games of all time. It's just excellent. It's just top quality. This is when EA was first starting with their sports games and they just made like just quality stuff. And uh, yeah, this game's fully complete. Um, I'm really looking forward to playing this again. I enjoyed the heck out of this game. And if you've if you've ever seen this in a bargain bin anywhere at some convention and that, you should seriously pick it up. It's totally worth it. And that concludes the Video Game Trader Pickups. And that's it for another episode of Loot and Booty. Thanks for checking it out. I hope you enjoyed all the adventures, the thrifting fun and uh, 
checking out all these new places. Uh, thank you again for watching. I'm Bastish B for 64K. I hope you had a good time. And if you can please like and subscribe and tell your friends about the channel, that'll be greatly appreciated. And I'll see you next time. Cheers.